It's so great to see you all here this morning together. I'm so excited to worship with you. Please stand, and, and, and as we prepare our hearts to worship, we'll pray. Thank you. Lord, we come here today. We come here today in, during this time of service, and we come here expecting to hear from you. We come here today expecting to feel your presence, Lord, and please be known to us. Please be seen amongst us, Lord. We pray that you are working and that we realize it. And we pray that you are with us through this whole service. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen.
be seated. Dear Lord, we come to you before our sermon this morning, and we pray that you are with Ron. We pray that you are calming any nerves that he may have, and we pray that your word is spoken to him, through him, Lord. We pray that you are guiding him in everything that he has done, preparing for this time that we have this morning. And we pray that everybody's hearts and minds, ears, and everything is receptive to his message, Lord, in your spirit. In your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Morning, church. Get this thing on. We're going to cover the uh, Passover supper today. And as you see on the uh, booklet this morning, I called it the Lord's Supper, Prophecies Fulfilled. You wouldn't believe the prophecies, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it here in a minute, but there's about 300 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. And I'm going to read from, uh, I, I got a new King James Version, and I wanted to read, I'm going to start off with Isaiah, and then I'm going to throw in some Zechariah in the middle of it. So, uh, uh, like I said, that Jesus fulfilled at least 300 prophecies in his early ministry. And uh, we'll read from uh, Isaiah. Fifty three verses one through twelve. Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when, he, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him, esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and, and he was afflicted, he w yet he was opened, not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. The shearers is, in, is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will desire or declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. 
and they made his grave with the wicked. But with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for his sin, for the sin he shall see his seeds. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because, because he poured out his soul unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, transgressors. And he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Let's pray. Father, uh, I just thank you for this opportunity uh, given to me again, and uh, I, I pray for your guidance as I pray for my church family here today, that uh, you would just fill this room with your spirit and, and uh, have Jesus on our mind. And uh, we just thank you for those that, uh, that can't be here, and that we just pray for them and uh, that they may fill your word and fill your spirit also. We just thank you for Jesus, and it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. I get it there. Passover supper we're going to listen to today in today's sermon was different from the previous two. This one, the third, during Jesus' ministry, part of the God's predetermined plan since before the time of Genesis and the fall of the first Adam. Jesus knew how this Passover was going to end. This was what he had come for. The Old Testament scripture are about him. They prophesied about his coming, how he would be received by people. As William talked about in his sermon about the triumphant entry in Jerusalem in Matthew 21, Jesus was treated as a king, as Jesus is the king of kings, hollering Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And two days later, he is ultimately handed over to the same people who sh cheered him and who came to say who he came to say saying crucify him crucify him let's go to mark 14 verses 12 through 26 On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go to the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him saying to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared for the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were there, they were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. 
It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and went, when he had given thanks, he gave them it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink the, it new in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Verses 12 through 21, I'll call God's predetermined plan. The disciples, Peter and John, as you'll see when he talks about the disciple that Jesus loved, asked Jesus, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? God had already communicated his plan to Jesus, and Jesus describes it in detail, where they go, are to go and there find a man carrying a water jug. In that time, it would have been unusual to see a man carrying a water jug since that was considered woman's work. I didn't, I, I had those words, but I found those words, ladies. I didn't make those up, I'm okay? So I knew there would be some backlash with that, but that's what it said. So he would have easily been identified. The instructions that Jesus had given Peter and John were exactly how Jesus detailed them and God had drawn them out. The symbolism in the Passover lamb and Jesus, it shows the significance of Jesus' sacrifice and the message of salvation. It shows us that the, just as the blood of the lamb protected the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross protects us from the consequences of sin and offers us eternal life with God. John and Peter went to Jerusalem and found things just as Jesus had described in his instructions on where to go and how they would find the person to ask for a place to, for Jesus and the other disciples to eat the Passover meal. The Passover meal was to be eaten at night after sunset. It had to be completed before midnight as God had instructed the Hebrew slaves in Egypt. The Passover meal, also known as the Seder, which means, means a Jewish ritual service and ceremonial dinner for the first night or first two nights of Passover, a Seder meal. Exodus 12, verses 8 through 14 say that same night they are to eat the meat roasted over a fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roasted over a fire. With the head, legs, and internal organs, do not leave any until morning. If they did, they had to burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked in your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And part of the ritual was the lamb were to be sacrificed on that, that day at 3 p.m. That was the time that Jesus, by record, passed on the cross. This is, is in remembrance of the night where God sends the tenth plague against all of Egypt, killing the firstborn humans and animals. God had instructed the Hebrews to brush the blood of the lamb on each of the door jams and the header so he would, he would know where they were so that death would pass by, eventually delivering the Hebrew slaves from the Egyptian bondage. 
evening has come and the other disciples arrived in the, at the location where they would have their Passover meal. I'll call this part the predetermined betrayer. Jesus and the 12 disciples are reclining around the table. And Jesus says, truly I tell you, the one, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. The apostles are deeply troubled. They begin looking at one another, wondering who it could be. John 13, verses 23 and 24. One of them, the disciples whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to Jesus. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one of he means. I want to go to John 13, verses 18 through 20. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fill this passage of Scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me, accepts the one who sent me. Judas Iscariot receives the bread that had been dipped into the bowl from Jesus. Jesus is, was demonstrating a final gesture of his love for Judas. Even though he would betray him, Judas had been completely handed over to the power of darkness. Verse 27, as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. Once Judas had gone and Jesus is alone with the faithful 11 remaining disciples, it was at this time that he transformed the Passover of the Old Covenant into the Lord's Supper of the New Covenant creating a new memorial feast to remember God's deliverance from sin. Jesus, last night with his disciples, he prepares them for what is about to take place. Later that evening, but the disciples still don't understand taking what's taking place. They think that Judas has just left. He's the group's treasurer, and they think he's left to buy more supplies for their Passover supper. They don't know that he's gone to see the high priest and uh, preparing for the fulfillment of the old covenant prophecy. John 13, 1 through 17. It was just before Passover festival. Jesus knew Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothes, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not, re not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, Peter said, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus an answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. 
Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he had said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that, that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you at an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you had know these things, you would be blessed if you do them. As they were preparing to eat the Passover meal, Jesus took the bread and wine and shared it with his disciples. I want to go to Luke 14. Verses 14 through 20. And you will be blessed, although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one one of those at the table with him heard this, he said, Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at, at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who who had been invited, come, for everyone is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I've got got married and can't come. I want to go to here. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. We'll call this a new covenant remembrance of his sacrifice for us. What that night brought when Jesus described the implements of wine and bread being his blood and body, We are to have an everlasting remembrance of what he did for us, saying, saving us from certain spiritual death and separation from our creator. Mark, verse 16, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. It's thought that the hymn they sang was Psalm 118, the Halil as those hymns are called, and they're called from the Psalms 113 through 118. They would have, been, would have been sung while passing the wine from person to person. These hymns could be sung anytime. 
Jesus and the disciples probably sang one on the way to the Mount of Olives. I'll call this part the predetermined fall. We're going to go to the Old Testament of Zechariah. Zechariah 13, 7 through 9. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Then I will turn my hand against the little ones, and it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one-third shall be left in it. I will bring one-third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call my name, and I will answer them. I will say, this is my people, and each one will say, the Lord is my God. I researched some Bible commentaries about the meanings of that prophecy right there, and it relates to Jesus and the fall of his disciples. I, I'm not going to go into great detail on it, but I did pick a couple of them to give definitions for them. My shepherd, the man who is close to me, God spoke of the true shepherd, the mighty man who in, is his intimate associate. He identifies Christ as his co-equal, affirming the deity of Christ. Strike the shepherd. It was the worthless shepherd that was supposed to be struck down, which was Israel. Now it's the good shepherd who, designed by God from the foundation of the world, Israel rejected the good and gracious shepherd who was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. God is the one who strikes the good shepherd by fulfilling the prophecy, placing the sins of the world on God to Jesus. We'll go to Mark 14 again. Verses 27 through 31 this time. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead uh, into Galilee. Declared, Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same thing. Jesus quotes the prophecy of Zechariah for his disciples, to his disciples. You will all fall away. It will be temporary falling away. He's letting them know without explaining the prophecy of their falling. He is letting them know without explaining a prophecy of their falling. Peter, the loudest voice of the 11, proclaimed in verse 31 that even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. The other disciples proclaimed the same thing, and we know how that worked out. Jesus has tried to explain to the disciples without being too prophetic that they are destined to fall away. But their fall will not be like Judas' betrayal. Jesus is delivering the words of comfort, letting them know what will take place, that he knows what's coming so that they won't be surprised. I will be struck, you will be scattered, then I will be raised from the dead, and I will go before you to Galilee. In other words, you, your fall will not be the final, because I will gather you to myself again. 
Jesus knew that once he was taken into custody, his di disciples would flee. The only apostle, the only apostle Jesus loved, John and Peter, followed Jesus to the place of the high priest. John 18, 15 through 16 says, Simon Peter and another apostle, apostle disciple, were following Jesus because this disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside. Commentaries say that John was known by the high priest, and that was the reason he was able to enter and then get clearance for Peter. Supposedly, John and the high priest are related in some way. I didn't see what that was, though. Providence of God. I looked up the dictionary, biblical di the definition of providence. It's called the foreseeing care and guidance of God or nature over the creatures of the earth. God, especially when conceived as omniscently directing the universe, and affairs of humankind with wise benevolence and manifestation of divine care or direction, provident care. The Passover is a time of remembrance for Jewish people to remember God's deliverance from bondage in Egypt, a very ritualistic process of around 15 steps, the different types of kosher food and wine singing, storytelling, especially to the children so that they didn't forget their history. Examples of Passover dishes are vegetables dipped in salt water, representing the tears of Jews shed, tears of Jews shed during their time of slaves. Bitter herbs, usually horseradish, symbolizing the unpleasant years of their bondage. And charoset, a mixture of apples, wine, walnuts, and cinnamon used to represent bricks and mortar used by the Hebrews to build pyramids. And then carpus, a vegetable, often celery, used to represent hope and renewal. But the remembrance meal is also for us, Gentiles, because it was through God's provident plan to save all people. What was once a mystery is now realized and known through God's word. God in the flesh came to earth to save all from being eternally separated from God. Today, when we partake in the, of the emblems of Christ Jesus, broken body and blood, poured out as an offering for our sins, let's remember how Jesus willingly laid down his life to save ours. And we'll... Go ahead and say a word of prayer. Father, I, I thank you for uh, your guidance. I thank you for leading me through this and filling this room with your spirit. I pray, Father, that, uh, that this message was uh, uh, according to your will. And I, I pray for these uh, church family members of mine. And uh, as we go to this next step of uh, uh, communion, Father, that uh, we may uh, reflect on Jesus and the things that he has done for us. We thank you for all things, Father, and it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Go ahead. Uh, we're going to enter a time of prayer uh, and, uh, and a message uh, with a song, and if you uh, need some prayer or, uh, or a community, a family here, and that uh, we can pray you together, pray for you, and then we'll enter a time of communion, and uh, we can go from there. Thank you. I'll get that table for a second. Please stand and sing with us. Oh. 
Uh, come up to ask for prayer for uh, give him strength and give him some hope in his recuperation from pneumonia. We pray for Tom, his father, as he also probably helps Gabriel in his healing process, Father. And we just know that you are the great surgeon and that you will take care of him and lay hands on him as you take care of us all. And it's in Jesus' holy name we pray this. Amen. continue our our prayer request here and uh, i'd like for you guys to meet um someone here this is steve murray um i think james is going to come down here as well um so steve has been uh worshiping with us for uh several weeks now here a couple of months and um one of the things that i've met with steve is i've seen his passion um his passion for for people and so one of the things that Steve does is Steve uh, works with a prison ministry known as Kairos. Kairos is a, uh, if, if I'm getting this correctly, it's an international prison ministry, but you work with Kairos of Ohio. And so what they do is by state to state, they go to different prisons 
uh, throughout the year, and they minister to people. They create disciples for Jesus. And um, this is something that's been uh, strong on Steve's heart. And um, he's getting ready to go into the prison with Kairos just in this next month. And uh, I think it's the weekend of April 18th through the 21st. Um, and a part of that, um, it takes a special person to do prison ministry. There's a lot of uh, darkness and fear to overcome when you go into that. And so uh, with that, he needs our support, um, particularly, um, most importantly, prayer as, as one of that. So I've asked him to come forward uh, here for prayer united uh, in the body of believers and uh, he's also seeking prayer for that particular weekend. And so uh, there's some other things that we want to do um, to support Steve in this ministry. I kind of view it almost as a missionary, that we're supporting a missionary going into a mission. And so um, in the coming weeks, Steve is going to have um, a, a table out here, and he'd love to talk to you more about what Kairos does and um, the mission that he has there with those people. Um, so I want to, I want to just have this moment for prayer. And then if you have more questions, um, he's, I, I'm going to speak for you, but Steve is a passionate guy and he would, he would love to talk to you more about how you guys can support not only him, but the people of Kairos. Cause it's not just him going to the prison. It's, um, another, uh, 30 or so gentlemen and, um, uh, people from all across, uh, Ohio are going in, and you guys are going to, uh, it's actually a local prison, to Pickaway, right? You're going to Pickaway, so um, that's r- relatively close to us. So I thought I'd introduce him to you guys um, so that you could be praying for him and the Kairos ministry. And then James, uh, I believe, is trying to be supportive, like stepping forward and saying, hey, I want to support this ministry in this. So um, we're just going to have a word of prayer with, with these two gentlemen. Lord God, I thank you so much for uh, putting this passion on the hearts of these two men, and more so that have uh, across the United States been a part of Kairos. And Lord God, as we uh, edify and lift them up in their spirit, Lord, I hope that our light overcomes the darkness that's in that place. Uh, Lord, it's a, a, a tough thing. But we know that you have called us into tough situations because you love your creation. You love your people. And so I ask, Lord, that their love would just be expressed just as Jesus would express it. That they would follow in his footsteps and give grace, kindness, and mercy to those they're ministering to. God, but I also want to pray for this church that as we are a part of this situation, as we are lifting up Steve and assisting with this ministry, God, we just pray that You give people hearts of compassion and love and mercy. God, we thank you for this opportunity to serve you and serve your kingdom, to bring people into your love and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Um, I want to give Devin uh, an opportunity. Uh, I know he said he wants to give an update on his youngest and what's going on there. Hello, I just wanted to give what he said, an update on Josiah. So uh, about a month ago, probably, I came up here, maybe a little bit longer than that, but I came up here and told you all about what was going on with him, about how we did an MRI, we found a cyst, and then the week following, I told you about how they said it aligns with cerebral palsy, and that still seems to be the case. It still does seem to align with cerebral palsy, and he was admitted into the cerebral palsy program at Nationwide. So that comes with, like, some good news and also some, like, trials coming up and just, like, through his physical therapy and stuff like that. But the the real big thing I wanted to update you on is we met with the neurosurgeon, and they said that there's no need for any sort of surgery. So that's pro- that's the big thing. For me is that we don't have to do any surgery for well our one-year-old so especially in the brain so yeah so that's the main thing is just kind of a praise there is that they said that it probably was something that happened with his birth 
and it did it cause a lack of oxygen within his brain, and that's probably, and the way the symptoms play out is probably just a weakness on his right side. But it's not like super, um, it, it, it's not as severe as it is with others that have similar accidents. So, um, so that's good. So I just wanted to update you all. Mm. <coughs> let's, have, let's have a word of prayer. God, we just pray for the Swakimer family. This, as they go through the emotions of uh, this illness, God, that you are there. And we continuously pray, as you have told us to, to continue to knock at the door. And we pray for a miraculous healing here. We know, Lord, that you can do so. And we, in faith, believe that you will bring it. But, God, even if you do not, we know that you are good. And we know that you are here and in control. And so we just ask for the faith to follow you along this path. God, you are amazing. And in all things, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lastly, I want to uh, introduce you to uh, Ernest Lynn. Um, If you would uh, come up here, please. And her husband, Charles, too. I don't want to ignore Charles um, either. So... um, But Ernest Lynn has been uh, with us for a couple of weeks here and uh, has just felt uh, repentance in her heart. And uh, so she's come forward today to get baptized into the name of Jesus uh, for the forgiveness of her sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so I've had some discussions with her and everything, heard her confession of faith. But uh, I just want you guys to hear it as well as a church that holds, uh, lifts people up in prayer and accountability. And so, uh, Ernest Lynn, if you would just repeat after me, I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. And he died for my sins. And he died for my sins. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's have a prayer for our sister, and then we will go and get ready, and then I will hand uh, the microphone over to Ron, who will do uh, communion. And so while we're getting ready, you guys can take communion together, and uh, we'll have our baptism. So let's pray. Lord God, we're so thankful for this heart to come forward, to seek repentance in your name, to just feel your grace in love and mercy. And God, I just pray for her and her family just that she would be an example to them, that she would lift them up through her spirit that is now connected with yours, the Holy Spirit that will dwell inside of her. You, God, are just so incredible to give us this mercy to forgive our sins with belief in Jesus Christ. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Well, today's communion meditation scripture is going to be in John 10, 7 through 18. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate of the, for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not, have not. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen.
upon your confession of faith. Ernestine, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. God, we are so thankful for this heart of courage to come forward and confess you as God, as Savior. God, I ask that you bless her and her family, that you show her your strength, your love, your tenderness, mercy, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Give all of this to her. God, be with our new sister. Raise her up in this church. Show her your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>